So there aren't many things in life that terrify me. Okay, okay, aside from that. Despite being a rational and generally capable adult, getting a haircut can conjure up stresses and anxiety that I didn't even know I had buried deep within my soul. Does it need to be this way? Absolutely not. Am I blowing this out of proportions? I'm inclined to say yes. But hey, who wants a story about how I had a nice haircut, went home and felt good about myself? It was a rhetorical question. <sighs> when I was around four or five, I suddenly decided, hey, I don't like my fringe. Uh, bangs to those Americans watching. It's time for it to go. I grabbed a pair of scissors and hacked that bad boy off. Amy, dinner's gonna be ready in five minutes. Uh, okay. <laughs> my mother was horrified. My dad, however, found this hilarious. He'd take off my baseball cap and show off to his friends and be like, look what my kid did. <laughs> now that's how you deal with your kid doing something. Dumb, but ultimately harmless. My hair misfortunes, however, would only continue. When I was seven, my dad assumed that I was grown up enough to be left alone with the hairdressers, you know, while he went out to run some errands or get some shopping done, and he'd be back to pick me up in 30 minutes. Just tell the nice lady to cut an inch off your hair. Can you do that? Mm. Yep. Oh, if only he knew all the anxious cogs that were turning behind that little grimacing face of mine. I'm sure you can see where this is going. The hairdresser asked me what I wanted and I said an inch off, just like I was supposed to. She washed my hair, it was all going fine, but then she got called over to work on another job, so another hairdresser took over. I don't know whether this person misheard the instructions or maybe she thought I was a boy or just had a vendetta against small children, but she started cutting my hair at my ear level and took a massive chunk out. At any point during this experience, I could have said something, but did I? Nope. Oh no, I was gonna sit there and watch this unfold. Just embracing this disaster. I ended up with pretty much a bowler cut. Oh, you look great. Do you like it? Great, I'll be back in a second, sweetie. Now let's pause here for a sec. You can absolutely rock any hairstyle with confidence, but I'm gonna reiterate, this is not what I wanted. Dad picked me up and was obviously a little taken aback, but I just pretended that this is what I wanted because I was too shy to say that it was far from it. I mean, what could I do now? They couldn't exactly just glue my hair back on. I think another factor that deters me from the salon is the gossipy nature that can surround it. How are you doing, babe? How's the boy? Uh, we broke up? Maybe this is just a Welsh salon thing. I'm gonna add before someone chimes in. Ugh, well, I've not had that experience. Uh, well, good for you. Moving on. I distinctly remember when I was 11 having been, again, dropped off at the salon whilst my dad would go and do some shopping. Dad, surely you know by now that leaving me alone with a hairdresser is just, ugh, a recipe for disaster. <laughs> I think it was pretty early in the day because I was the only customer in the salon and as the two members of staff started working on my hair, they started offhandedly kind of complaining about me. Oh wow, your hair's so thick, I'd hate to deal with hair like that. Oh, so difficult to manage. Huh, red hair's always annoying to lift when dyeing it. I'm lucky I don't have red hair. Mm, the way your hair is now just isn't framing your face right. Well, what am I supposed to say to that? I don't think these ladies had bad intentions. I think they were probably just trying to make some conversation and were probably pretty bored. But dude, I guess thanks for planting the seed of insecurity deep within my soul. It's not like it still affects me to this day. Though you'll be glad to know that despite those experiences, I did eventually find a hairdresser that I could trust with my precious locks. Her name was Katie and she was only actually a year or two older than me. After we'd get through the standard, so how's life? What are you up to these days? We'd mainly talk about traveling. Also, Katie put up with my early 20s scene kid crisis. She'd do exactly what I asked, ridiculously choppy layers and all. Thank you for your patience, Katie. I'm sure you were cringing beyond that smile of yours. Luckily, I came around in 2016 and actually got a normal, nice haircut. Thank heavens, I thought I'd never see this day. But did you enjoy my Welsh accent? 
and my hair looked great. I felt great for a change, <laughs> but good things never last. Katie moved on from working at a hairdresser's to training hairdressers on courses, so now I had to find a new place. Oh, frick. So a month or so ago, I would have gone a good eight months without having my hair cut. And boy, it was gross. It was all straggly on the ends. And when it gets like that, I can't help but like want to pick the tatty ends off. So I end up unintentionally looking like an anxious mess. I mean, not that I'm not anyway, but I just obsessively keep like smoothing my hair because it feels ugh, like crispy. I can't keep doing this. I've got to find someone new. Just ugh, suck it up, baby. Find yourself a new hairdresser. It's not that hard. So I finally booked in with this local place in London and had a pretty respectable rating and it was a chain. So the likelihood of things going wrong was slim. Plus they had a new year's discount and it was half off the price for customers. So even if it did go wrong, at least I'm only paying half price for it. So I dragged my butt down there and it was all going pretty well, to be honest. I still had my standard minor freak out when I've been sat in front of a mirror for too long. Because of my aphantasia, I can't imagine what I look like in my head. So staring at myself in the mirror for so long leads me to the inevitable, is this who I am? Hmm. Whoa, there's a skull my under my eyes always been face. this wonky. Is time just a construction of the human real? mind? And in fact, everything what is What is my true purpose? <laughs> Maybe that's just me? Now, I'm going to throw this one out there because I don't know if anybody else can relate, but so you know when you're having your head kind of massaged whilst they're washing it in the basin, I really enjoy it. Like it's like having a head massage, but at the same time, I'm thinking I don't want them to think I'm a creep and that I'm enjoying it too much. So I don't want to close my eyes and fully enjoy this experience because they'll think I'm a weirdo. But at the same time, I end up overthinking this in the moment and I end up not enjoying it because I'm not concentrating on it. I'm worrying. At the end of the day, they probably really don't care. So I'm, I'm the crazy one. Anyway, the actual haircut was pretty nice and I was happy. But as I went to pay, the staff immediately started booking me up for a follow-up appointment in eight weeks, which I'll be honest, I really didn't want. I actually said, um, nah, I don't want to book that for now, thanks but they just continued to book me in anyway as if they hadn't heard me. And they were just so smiley and enthusiastic. Like, did, did they not hear me? Can I refuse this again? Your total will be 52 pounds. Oh, frick. That's, that's double what I should be paying. Are they charging me for the follow-up appointment now? This isn't right. Just, just say something, Amy. Say something before it's too late. Here, uh, oh, okay, here. No! Thank you, have a nice day, see you in a few weeks. I don't know, I was put on the spot. I was way too panicked to say anything there and then. But I reasoned with myself on the walk home that I would call back later and just say that there'd been a mistake and show them my original booking online for half that price. Did I actually follow up on that though? Absolutely not. Moral of the story, don't be a wuss like me. <laughs> if you're paying for something and it isn't right, just say something. Hopefully you haven't had too many traumatic hair experiences, but I'm sure we all have at some point. So that's all for now from another episode of Advice I Try to Live By, But Don't Always Succeed, Because I Panic in the Moment. <laughs> Classic Amy Right Meow video. Okay, bye! Thank you so much for being patient with my videos. I'm so sorry they take so long to, to get out, but you know, hopefully that'll change in the future. Fun story, I actually ended up calling up the hairdressers because I had to cancel that appointment that was booked. You're gonna be proud of me. I was brave enough to ask them why they charged me so much because I was like, oh, did I pay for the, the second appointment up front? And if so, can you refund me? And it uh, turns out that they gave me an extra treatment on my hair that they didn't tell me would cost extra. So um, yeah, if you're a hairdresser, maybe don't do extra things without telling the client um, because I wasn't expecting that. I also have a story about when I was 14 where I dyed my hair bleach blonde because I got bullied so badly because of my ginger hair, but that story directly ties into my high school story, so you'll hear about that one then. As always, if you want to keep up with me, I have a Twitter and Instagram with the same name. I'm also going to be live streaming on Twitch more often. 
I know I've been infrequent with my second channel with the art drawings, but that's gonna come back stronger than ever. So I just really wanted to get this video out. It took way longer than I thought it would. This was one of those videos that was supposed to be five minutes and then turned into 10 minute plus. Ugh. Also, fun news, I'm going to VidCon LA this year. So if you wanna meet me, come to Anaheim, come say hi. <laughs> all right, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting and uh, I really appreciate you all. Cheers.